Hi there, I'm Alex from Southern Ukulele Store, bathed in natural light, but don't be fooled, I'm absolutely freezing as I film this in the middle of December. So I've been asked a half a dozen times in the last week to do a video comparison of the Inui Nui Lion and the Cedarbird, because the Cedarbird is not a newly launched model, but it's new here to Sus, and it's put new eyes on that ukulele and what a ukulele it is. So yeah, okay, it makes loads of sense. Let's make that video, but also lots of you want to know the UT200 and the Lion and the UT200 and the Cedarbird bird and AMM3 is also part of the conversation for a lot of people and the UT3K has suddenly become one of the most popular ukuleles in the shop we can't seem to keep them for more than a few days so which one would you go for which one should you go for you can play a fantasy game of that or you can actually buy these ukuleles there will be links to these in the description of the video i try not to say that too much in the videos but you know we're a shop and we absolutely love it especially rob the boss when people buy ukuleles that we feature so make it a happy christmas for all of us and check out the links in the description um i'm not going to run through them individually i'm going to play the sound samples now here's the sound samples back to back and i will be back to talk about them after
Okay, so you've heard all five of those ukuleles there. I'm not going to go through them one by one. If you want to see that breakdown, if you go to the descriptions on our website, there are videos for each of these ukuleles individually where I've talked about them. Uh, I've said everything I could possibly say about these ukuleles in recent memory. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about my thoughts and feelings about them after playing each of them today. So first of all, I'm going to start with the Moonbird. The Moonbird for me has much more balance than the rest of the ukuleles. It's the one that has the flattest frequency response. There's not kind of a booming bass, there's not a booming treble. It's not piercing. It's just level, it's calm, it's expressive. When you're finger picking single notes, they don't seem to lose any of their resonance or their beefiness compared to when you strum them. When you strum them, it remains compressed and tight. I found that the cedar bird had just a tiny bit more bass and a tiny bit more sparkle, which, so, you know, on, on reflection you could say, well, this has got more of this and more of that and it's better. Not necessarily, it's just different. If something has a bit more bass and a bit more sparkle, when you come to strum certain chords or play a low G, you might find that the bass is a bit more prominent in the mix, which is going to suit a finger picker, but if you're an all-out strummer, then the moonbird might be better than the cedar bird. The cedar bird is the more dynamic model to my ears, certainly based on the two I played today. Um, but you know, if we were to put a low G on that ukulele, it might be a completely different story. Moving on again to the lion, if you're going to compare the cedar bird and the lion, I noticed that the coa back and sides on the lion gave it less projection. It's more closed in. You know, the lion is a loud ukulele, but I felt like I was hearing the majority of that sound. Whereas I think that the microphone, listening to the sound samples, you know, the actual sound hole is pushing the noise on the cedar bird out more, making it louder. The lion seems to fill the air around it a bit more. Um, also, I found that the lion has just a tiny bit less bass than the cedar bird. It's a bit sparkly again, but it's a different kind of sparkle, folks. It's so hard to describe uh, what you're hearing. I really recommend, I, I actually recorded all of these today with headphones on, I've listened to the sound samples back. You can hear the differences between them. If you've never listened to our videos with headphones, I recommend giving that a go today as you'll really get the eccentricities of each model. Uh, moving on to the koa bird, you get a completely different experience. The koa bird is much more tropical as you'd expect because it's Hawaiian koa. But actually, the koa bird, the UT3K to me, had a fullness to it that you don't normally associate with koa. I always like to say koa is, if you were going to make it another instrument, it's harp. So it's got a lullaby, an almost kind of sweet nature to it. You get all of that with this ukulele, but I also found that when I was finger picking it for the second sound sample you're going to hear in a moment, it really rings out. The finger picked notes with lots of attack have just as much depth and character as the strum chords. And I will say, you know, I don't normally pick a favourite, but of the four ukuleles I played today, the Koa Bird was the one where I didn't want to stop playing it. The end of one of the sound samples, you'll hear I play a, an octave C chord. And I let it ring out and I almost went to the microphone and said just listen to that and played it again but I didn't want to spoil the consistency of the sound samples. And then finally you have the AMM3 which is a much more affordable ukulele by comparison. Being mahogany it has much more of a mid presence but there's something about a Nui Nui's that just don't sound traditional. You know, a traditional mahogany ukulele is quite dark and quite, it closed in on itself. So it's almost percussive. When you play it hard, you get, you know, you don't get lots and lots of volume. Instead, what you get is a lot of flavor. And you still have the flavor, but maybe it's the gloss finish that a Nui Nui use, but it's much louder than your average mahogany ukulele. And when you're playing um, tighter, kind of picked or plucked notes, there's lots and lots of attack. Um, but the mid frequencies, the C and the E string, really stand out on that ukulele um, more than on the other four ukuleles I played. Anyway, folks, that's my opinion on these five ukuleles. Lots of you have asked what I think about them, which one I would go for. Based on today, I think if I had to name my top three, I would say UT3K, and then I would really struggle to pick a favourite between um, any of the others. There's not a clear number two. They all do very different things, but they look like well they are you know four of these ukuleles are a series so they have a 
kind of consistent look to them. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And if you have uh, your own experiences of any of these ukuleles, let us know. Um, if you have a question, you can contact me in store at alex at ukulele.co.uk or call me on 01202 430820. Links are in the descriptions. Thanks for watching. I will be back next week with the top 10 ukuleles of 2022.